All right. Well, <clears throat> I think we've discussed auto hybrids before in other user group meetings, uh, but I thought it might be good to have a little refresher and also show a couple of little uh, tips and tricks. So uh, this is a little steel pergola structure that uh, I've modeled, and I'd like to have that show up as an auto hybrid. One of the things that Vectorworks has done for years and years really is um, have this concept of a, a hybrid object. And that's an object that appears correctly in 3D, of course, but then when you go to a top plan view, it shows up correctly in 2D the way that I would want to show it uh, if I were drafting this, right? Um, so in this case, I've just taken a top plan view of the uh, pergola structure and you can see there's some things about it that are not displaying the way that I would really expect to see with any kind of uh, typical architectural graphic standards. So let me zoom in here and point out what I mean. So the steel beams that sit on top of the round columns here, uh, if I highlight that, you can see it quite clearly that, uh, of course, being a uh, a wide flange, there's some filleting in the model here, right? Let me zoom in there. You can see that filleting in the model. And when I'm in top plan view, that filleting is showing up as these additional lines. That's not desirable. Also, uh, these angles that I'm using uh, for the top of the pergola, the uh, purlins, that's just a regular steel uh, angle. That's a four by four by quarter inch, very common steel profile. And what I've done is I've rotated that. Uh, you can see there's a rotation angle or a roll angle. So I've rolled that so that the, uh, the uh, point is up and it's resting on two, uh, two edges on top of the steel beam and maximizing the shade that it is providing and shedding water and doing all of that. But as a result, when I see that in plan, right, obviously that's going to be 1.4142 inch times the four inches because it's a, um, you know, it's a uh, right triangle. But if I measure it, you can see it's actually two and seven eighths. So uh, sort of a a function of this rolled seal member is that you can see when I'm in top view, right, just a wireframe top view, it is displaying correctly. And it's, you know, five and five eighths or so inches wide. But if I switch over to top plan view, then I'm getting this funny sort of width discrepancy. So there's a couple of things about this model. Also, the, the spacing of them looks wrong in top plan view. Um, but if I go to top view, you can see it's they're correct. Right? So as I was about to say, there's, there's a couple of things about this model that look great in 3D, but that are not quite working for me in 2D. And so one thing that I could do is I could just gather all of this and make a symbol out of it and then manually draft on the 2D side of the symbol, manually draft some 2D components, um, rectangles and dashed lines and so forth. Um, and that's, you know, that's fine. It's uh, more time consuming. And the big problem is, is that if I decide to change the spacing of these um purlins or the make the beams farther apart move the columns and the beams then i've got to redo all of that 2d drafted portion of the hybrid symbol uh, so it's not it's not automatic i've got to do it manually and every time i change it i've got to change it manually and that's not ideal either so uh several years ago vectorworks came up with this uh device called an auto hybrid it's available in the design suite landmark, spotlight, architect. So I think everything but fundamentals, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And so what the auto hybrid does is it takes 3D geometry 
and it uh, creates uh, the 2D projection geometry that you would expect um, as a drafter to see. And, uh, and so it's, it's, uh, it's quite nice about that. Uh, now there's some, uh, problems with the, not problems, but sort of a limitation of the auto hybrid is that it cannot include objects that are themselves already hybrids. So this framing member is a hybrid object. It has one appearance in top plan view, but then it has a different appearance in any other uh, view, any 3D view. Uh, here it is in top view, and again in uh, top plan view, right? So it's a hybrid object. So I can't make an auto hybrid from hybrids, or can I? So here's the workaround. I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'll go ahead and uh, grab all of these, do a crossing selection and grab all of these framing members except for the slab here. So I've got 19 of them. Okay, so I've just selected those. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my model menu and add solids. So one of the cool things that you can do with framing members and other uh, plugin objects in Vectorworks is you can add and subtract uh, them as solid objects when you're in a 3D view. And in fact, that's what I did over here with these steel beams, right? So that's reading as a solid subtraction, but if I double click on it and edit the solid, you can see that it's actually uh, a steel framing member and then an extrusion um, an extrusion at each end, right, that I have subtracted from that framing member. Right. right. So there, there it is. So I've subtracted that to create that sort of notch in the steel beam. Um, and, and the cool thing is that, um, even though I've created this solid subtraction from the framing member, when I burrow down into the Boolean operation by using the edit uh, solids command, it's under modify um, uh, edit solid subtraction or exit solid subtraction. Um, within that solid subtraction, the framing member stays a framing member. So I can do the kind of framing member things like change it from a six by nine to a four by 13, for example, right? I could, I could do a, a, any of those things. So that's really nice. That's kind of a cool sort of unknown feature. Um, so what I'm, what I'm going to do here is let me go to a, a side view. I'm just going to grab all of these framing members. I've got 19 of them my purlins, and I'm going to, under the model menu, I'm going to add solids. So the funny thing is, is that I can add these together as a solid, even though they are not contiguous, right? They are entirely discrete. They're not touching each other or overlapping in any way, but I've now created a solid addition out of all of these individual framing members. It's a single object. Right. And if I uh, uh, double click on it, I can edit the solid. And they're just all individual framing members. They haven't been uh, it's sort of a non-destructive uh, addition. Great. So now I have a solid addition and I have a couple of solid subtractions. And so I can go ahead and take this pergola structure right here and make it into an auto hybrid because even though nested within these subtractions and additions, I have hybrid objects, the top level, the, the series of purlins and the two beams, those are not technically uh, hybrid objects, right? So uh, if I'm in, top plan view, they appear this way. If I'm in top wireframe view, they look exactly the same. 
So I'm going to select these in the top plan view and under the AEC menu, I'm going to create an auto hybrid. And uh, by default, the cut plane for the auto hybrid is four feet. And that's why I'm getting this dialog box because the cut plane is below all of that. So that's okay. It's still showing me that I've got an auto hybrid. So let's go ahead and change the cut plane from four feet to say 12 feet. And suddenly everything appears. There it is. And I can play with this, uh, with the appearance here. And so at the cut plane, which I can set at 12 feet, I can show uh, that uh, I'm gonna display anything that's sectioned by the cut plane, in this case, nothing, because it's way above the, the pergola structure. And I can either assign a class to everything here, or I can use the class of the objects that are contained, right? So that's what I'm gonna do. And so I'll use the 2D attributes of the contained objects and the 2D attributes of the contained objects for pen as well as fill. I can show a smoothing angle if I've got a curved geometry. Generally speaking, I wanna you know, make that something other than one uh, degree. And uh, I can have a low, medium, high, or very high conversion resolution. Again, if I have some curved geometry, I wanna, might want to mess with that. So that's the cut plane. Um, I also have the option to display below the cut plane, same, uh, same, same uh, settings here, and above the cut plane. So there's, there's, uh, there's nothing uh, sort of above the cut plane, right? So um, now what I could do is I could change the cut plane to say four feet back to where I would normally section it and then um, not show a cut plane. Doesn't matter what's below the cut plane because there's nothing up there. And then above the cut plane, I could go ahead and display that, right? And um, I can go ahead and make that uh, infinite, or I could give it a, a finite uh, height above the cut plane. So let's see if I go with about, oh, let's go with five feet, five foot six. I'm just guessing here. Okay. And so let's above the cut plane, let's change that to five feet. There we go. If I go to four feet, everything disappears. So it's a bit of a trial and error. I could have uh, prepared better and uh, measured this. Let's try four foot six. There we go. So perfect. So if I if I if I aim just right, uh, I'm only seeing the beams, but I'm not seeing the purlins because I'm I'm looking up. And uh, yeah, maybe make that uh, four foot three, four foot four. Yeah. So that's the magic number there is uh four foot three there we go uh so you can see right here i'm i'm cutting right through the fillet of the uh of the uh web and flange i'll keep tinkering with that it's closing the fillet And so on. Um, and then another thing I can do is show that as a reflected ceiling plan. That's another way of dealing with that. Right. And um, 
could make that infinite. And so now it's uh, just sort of automatically showing the auto hybrid seen from below. Looking up, I can go ahead and move, send, the, bring these columns to front, right? And so that auto hybrid is displaying the the uh, uh, geometry above it, you know, as a reflected ceiling plan. And when I'm in a 3D view, again, it's, um, go ahead and go to a save view here. In this 3D view, it just, it looks perfectly normal. And then in my top plan view, it appears as an RCP. I can even create a, a viewport, right? So let's go ahead and, um, Let's draw a rectangle here and create a viewport using the rectangle as the crop. I'll put it on a new sheet layer. Okay, so there, there it is. And what I could even do in that viewport is under the classes, I can show this structural beam steel class, edit that and force it to have, say, a lighter line weight, different pen weight, and make it dashed with, um, say, solid fill, that's fine. If I go to black and white view, now it's showing up as an RCP um, but it's, but it's dashed. So in this case, uh, I could go ahead and show that, uh, all that steel as if it were, uh, dashed for being overhead. And then I could have a, another, uh, drawing where I, uh, didn't have that. Go ahead and reverse, didn't force the class to a different, right? So uh, there's my RCP and there's my plan. And there you go. There's a, there's a single auto hybrid that's giving me a different appearance uh, in viewports based on how I'm controlling the classes. Uh, and again, it's uh, perfectly happy as a model. And then again, if I just double click on that, I'm inside the auto hybrid. If I double click on uh, these uh, this solid, I could say, uh, take every other framing member and uh, add um, 18 inches to its span, exit that, right? And if I go back to my sheet layer, all of that's been just automatically handled by the, R by the auto hybrid. I didn't have to redraw anything it's just like the tool says, auto. All right, thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful.